Good day, everyone. Today, I'm happy here to share our recent findings on extrinsic contact sensing with motion tracking from tactile measurements. I'm Daolin Ma from MCube Lab at MIT. Manipulation is largely about controlling contact behaviors. But before we can control contact, we should first be able to sense it. In contact-rich manipulation scenarios, such as tool using or assembly, we not only care about the internal contact between the fingers and the object, but also it's critical to keep track of the external unsensed interaction between the object and its environment, such as the point contact between a screwdriver and the nut, or the line contact between the packing box and the hole. As human, even without knowing how, our brain and the haptic sensing are amazingly good at making such estimations. However, for an automation system, how can a robot localize the object's contact with its environment? We call such a localization problem the extrinsic contact sensing problem, because the contact is extrinsic to the robotic hand. Extrinsic contact sensing is in contrast to the intrinsic contact sensing, which was introduced by Dr. Anthony Bicke about 30 years ago. Under the assumption of known geometry and with certain convexity, intrinsic contact sensing can map the force and torque measurements at the wrist into the contact force and infer the contact's location on the robot. Intrinsic contact sensing works well for many scenarios, but to apply in manipulation, we have to make assumptions that the geometry of the wrist, gripper, and finger manipulation chain is precisely known. However, if an object is added to the manipulation chain, the assumption of known geometry becomes more impractical because precise knowledge of the geometry of the object is usually not easy to get, and the pose of the grasp is easily subject to change. So how to sense the extrinsic contact? What we propose is using the distributed tactile sensors instead of the force torque sensors. This figure shows a comparison between the extrinsic and intrinsic contact sensing. In the following, we show how to formulate the problem. The idea of extrinsic contact sensing is neat because contact sensing is an inverse problem. We need to think about it in backwards, starting with the extrinsic contact. We notice that when an object is in contact with the environment, its motion is kinematically constrained by that contact in certain ways, either subject to the non-penetration constraint or the sticking friction constraint, and so on. It inspires us that the kinematic constraint has the contact location information encoded. So we propose to infer the contact location by decoding this kinematic constraint, as long as we can precisely track motion of that object. So the next problem is, how to track the object's motion. Yes, as inspired by human hand with the tactile measurement embedded within the fingers. So this is the tactile finger we are using. It's a vision-based tactile sensor. The sensing element is a piece of soft gel, which can be deformed when in touch with an object. And the camera inside the sensor can record the images, from which we can get the deformation of the gel including the depth and the tangential motion. And we can reconstruct other tactile information from that, such as the force distribution or slip detection. For the motion tracking, when an object is moving, any point on that object moves accordingly. If we can measure motion of a point cloud on that object, we can infer the rigid body motion of that object. For example, the object is initially at the blue configuration and it moves to the red pose. With the tactile sensor, we can measure the blue point moving to the red point from A0 to AK. There should be a rigid body transformation, RK and PK connecting them. Such a rigid body transformation corresponds to the rigid body relative motion of that object, which we can retrieve by solving this linear optimization problem. On the right hand side is the real experimental setup. The gripper equipped with vision-based tactile sensor is grasping an object and moving. With the tactile measurement, we can track the object's motion. Before we go further to the framework, we make several assumptions first. First, the grasped object is rigid. And secondly, 
the contacted environment is rigid. And thirdly, the grasp is stable, meaning that there's no slip between the finger and the object. And lastly, the object remains contact with environment so that the external contact remains consistent and recoverable. Many of these assumptions can be simplified by, by considering more complex models of interaction. But in this paper, we would like to keep them here so that we focus on the fundamentals of the relationship between external contacts and haptic signals. So in a forward pass, the extrinsic contact sensing problem is formulated into a kinematic constraint optimization problem. For example, as shown on the top, an object is contacting with the environment on the table edge, and the object is rotating around that edge. What we can measure with the tactile sensors are the 3D motions of some points within the grasping contact patch, and we track the object's motion from this motion field. Then finally, we localize the extrinsic contacts by solving a constraint optimization problem with the location of the contact as unknowns. So in the following, we show experimental validations. In this experiment, the object is in contact with our tactile sensor. We move the object by hand randomly and track its motion with a vacuum tracking system only for comparison as the ground truth. We compare the tactile tracked rotation with the vacuum tracked rotation represented as quaternions here. We can see that without knowing geometry of the object, and without placing markers on the object, tactile sensing can achieve motion tracking of similar accuracy to that of a vacuum, which is the most accurate commercial motion tracking system. Then we validate the extrinsic contact sensing framework with two case studies, the point contact and the line contact. Formulation of a point contact is an optimization like this. The robot has grasped a tool and the tool is in contact with the environment. The hand moves a little bit to allow the passive exploration. And then the tactile measurements are used to localize the screwdriver's contact with the environment. It's worth noting that the motion we can track is in 3D. We achieve very accurate estimation for the extrinsic contact locations. Here the red dots represent the ground truth and the blue represents the estimation. We tested the framework on four different objects. Without knowing precise knowledge for any of them, good estimation is achieved for all of them. And case two is the line contact. For line contact, more details for formulation is in the paper. We first test it in simulation. The green line here shows the estimated contact edge, while the red line represents the ground truth. The dashed line is the initial guess of the optimization. And for real experiment, we got some poor results. And we find the reason is that in the absence of any controller that can enforce it, the line contact is quite fragile and easily degenerates into a point contact. As a result, more, many experiment data yield data that violates the line contact assumption. So in conclusion, we want to emphasize three contributions of this paper. First, we proposed a method to achieve very high accuracy motion tracking from only tactile sensing, without knowing geometry of the object and without placing markers on the object. And secondly, we proposed a framework that can estimate an extrinsic contact of the grasped object, which again requires no or only minimal knowledge for its geometry. And thirdly, we have experimentally validated these ideas and methods. In addition, there are two comments we would like to make. First, this work also tells us convincingly that the tactile sensing measures not only force and shape, but also motion. The motion tracking should be an important modality for tactile sensor, not, for not only the vision-based tactile sensors we are using, but also other types of tactile sensors, such as the flexible electronics. And second, we look forward to seeing development of the closed loop tactile controllers that are enabled by this perception framework. And with that said, I would like to thank my advisor, Abdul Rodriguez, and my colleague, Suyuan Dong. I also want to thank my special thanks to my uh, 
great engineer Ian Taylor for making these tactile sensors. And we want to thank the supporting agencies, Hong Kong Research Grant Council and Delta and Lenovo Corporation. Thank you all. All right, thank you very much. Um, committee members, uh, do we have any uh, questions? I'd like to ask a, a quick question while uh, the other committees uh, think about uh, um, possible questions. Um, but in the sensor, um, how much it seems to be um, allowing a fair amount of motion with between the um, object and the um, sensor um, in order to sense that this, the, the get all the, is, is that true? Am I seeing this correctly? There's a fair amount of slip compared to a human grasp? Uh, yes, that's right. So with this sensor, uh, the sensing element is a piece of soft gel. So that can deform, that allows the relative motion between hand and the object. And even if there is partial slip uh, with this sensor, we can track that slip. So in the future work in, you can like, dis sorry, you can disregard that part of sleep and still you can track the motion of the object. Okay. Therefore, if you could uh, embed incipient slip detection into this device, um, would that improve the stability of the grasp? That's your, that's right. You are right. And we have published a paper like two years ago about incipient sleep detection on this type of tactile sensor. Excellent. Other questions? I have a question. May I ask a question about? Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, so the, my question is related to the uh, time response. So the, now the once an uh, uh, object make a contact with uh, some sensor, so the, I would like to know the, how long the, does it take to detect the, some contact? Uh, are you? Now the time, uh, yes, time response of the sensor. Oh, so right now it's about 15 milliseconds from the moment it makes the contact to um, when we can process the image and get that signal. Okay, so then now the, I direct as the some stability at the moment of the make a contact. The stability. So that now, the, do you have a, some a graph about to show the some transition of the contact position? Right now, we assume that the external contact is uh, consistent. It it's stable. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.